Welcome to episode 51 of the Apple Podcast. On this episode, we have Joey Bradford from The Used. Oh, I thought we'd say that, didn't we? I know, oh. man. It's weird, isn't it? <laughs> oh. Bringing in the good stuff and we have a good chatteroo. We discuss all things to do with the latest album, the hard work, the recording process, some of the awesome collaborations they had during the recording of that album. We talk about his um, SLT tones. I'm going to clarify, I fucked up on this because when we asked the question <laughs> about that, I said STL tones. Am I, I saying? Think, I think so. S, is it S L T? Fuck! I'm going to Instagram it right it. now. Or, <laughs> whilst we're on this, because I'm going to nip in the bud. I am very sorry to the lovely fellas at S T L tones. S T L, not S L T. S T L. S L T rolls off the tongue better, doesn't it? That's because in my head I say S L T. Either way, we talk all about his uh, custom pack that he's got with them and the process how that works. Uh, we talk pet peeves. We talk what was his favourite scary movie and loads more. Yeah, be sure to check the used out on all socials as usual. Uh, the latest album on Spotify. Um, and Joey, Joey himself, obviously, with him being a studio uh, producer. Go check out all his recent projects as well. Um, get onto our socials, Discord. Don't forget you can join in, ask us any questions on there, and uh, yeah, just enjoy the episode. And before you go, if you haven't already seen, we've released a brand new series under our um, earful podcast roof, uh, called Civil Screen on the Scene with our lovely friend Ryan, who's gonna be discussing all things to do with film. Make sure you go and check that out, obviously, as you can see. There is only two of us now. There's only two mats. Uh, keep posted for new updates to do with Pearson's new program that we'll be releasing at some further date. Otherwise than that, enjoy our episode with Joey. It is a good chat and a good listen. Otherwise than that, we'll see you soon. All right, see. Joey, how are we doing? We're good, man. Beautiful day here in Southern California. Blue skies. Good things. Do you know what? I think it's been the absolute opposite in the UK because in the same space of five days, we've had 20 degrees warmth, <laughs> nice and sunny. Two days later, it's been snowing. I've seen that. Yeah, brutal. Like, <laughs> it doesn't make sense <laughs> at all. Yeah, it went from like 75 to 80 last week. So that was kind of rough for a second there. <laughs> That's really nice to even nicer if you are curious. That's what that is. <laughs> ah, that's that's always good that's better than what we're experiencing at the minute at the moment it's just really gloomy would you say i feel well, you i feel you uk we're all sorry yeah, yeah. spoiled down here i'm super spoiled i love it <laughs> so Jealous. what have you what have you been up to recently anyway uh i've been producing tons and tons of stuff so i have a i have a studio here that i've run for a long time we built a new version of it finished just when the pandemic started so um this second the version 2.0 of the studio we started in about august and i haven't had but a week off since then so just making records making songs whatever we can do so i've been busy it's been nice but i'm ready to play some shows again i think that's the same for everyone isn't it like you have to you just yeah. have that itch yeah. like you're missing something like yeah, there's a void it, that can't be filled <laughs> i know it's crazy but everyone's feeling it so i'm trying not to you know, do well on it. And we've been able to make a lot of music. I think that's what's cool is everyone has been making music, writing music, making records that are going to be coming out over the next couple of years. So as Absolutely. we all know, that's all we've been talking about, right? There's going to be just yeah. a flood of music coming out. It's going to be cool. Like a giant tidal wave of new music eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, just the, the stuff that we've made in here, I'm like, that's already too much for me to listen to in a year. I don't know what everyone else is <laughs> <laughs> so where about seeing you based at the current point um i'm in san diego in california oh nice. great okay mm -hmm. is that typically where you are or is this just for a temporary yeah, time being here forever this is born and raised in san diego um the rest of the boys obviously from from utah originally and now everyone's yeah. all over the world and uh i guess the band is based in la that's where we meet up when we exist but everyone's all over the place but i've been in san diego forever 
Amazing, amazing. So have you been so, recording like other bands now then during during lockdown? You've given you've got people coming in and recording with yourselves. And like you said, obviously before we recorded, uh, you've you've had that collaboration with people online as well. What's that been like? Yeah, it's been cool. I mean, uh we've had we've had a few bands in here and produced full records and you know, from the beginning writing the songs and and recording and doing the whole thing. Yeah. Uh finish another record a couple days ago with a, a band from here called sweet tooth that are super awesome and um but yeah i've been doing a lot of co-writes as well so so you know writing songs with other bands collaborating with other songwriters you know the other day i had uh we did a zoom co-write um me and my my buddy hiram hernandez he's in arizona we're working with the band otherwise one of the guys is in vegas one of the guys is in new york and we're able to put together a song that i think is really cool that we would never be able to get in the same room ever, you know, four different yeah. states, such yeah. a pain in the ass and so expensive. So a lot of stuff like that, where it's just like, who's available, who wants to jump on, you know, one guy gets on the sticks and, and records and uses a session and it's been crazy. It's been really cool. Would you say that you've had to adapt much in terms of like doing it online in comparison to doing it in person? Do you think there's much that you've had yeah, to change yeah, and swap around? Yeah, the first couple months of everyone doing it, kind of the end of last year, it was everyone was just like, this is garbage. This sucks. This isn't even worth it. <laughs> Let's fail, whatever, you know. And as time has gone on and it's kind of like, well, this is it or we don't really get an opportunity to work together. Um, it's it's become really cool. There was a learning curve, but also the technology has exploded in the past few months alone. So, um, you know, or at least the knowledge of technology that's been out there. So something like audio movers, we've been using a ton. So like I'll have my session open in Pro Tools in my studio and another guy will have his session open in his studio and I can basically hear what's coming through his speakers on my rig. So we know exactly what's going on. We have like the computer here that we're zooming, we're recording on each other's rigs, sending files back and forth. It's just like, it's a bit of a headache and it takes obviously more time, but it works and it's really cool. That's insane. That's 2021 for you, isn't it? No, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, ridiculous. I never, and I'm not like a techie guy too. So it's taken me some time to get into all this stuff and, but I love it. It's fun. Yeah. It was smoothly transitioning that then. Um, it's worth mentioning. You've obviously got your signature pack with SLT tones. I do. I do. You do. And it sounds awesome. But would you, would you mind talking us through the process of how that came to be and what goes into the process of making those? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, essentially what I did to make my preset pack is I took all of these amps. Let's see if we can get a good shot. So I have my whole oh. rig, all sorts of yeah. synergy, amps, all sorts of stuff. There's Mesa's orange, bad cat, a bunch of bad cat. Um, yeah, so I basically took all my amps, everything that I have, every single channel, everything that I ever use and like, and we ran it into three different cabs. We used different preamps, different mics, like the most insane amount of recording. But what I did is basically, I, you know, you record about a, a minute or so of you playing on each channel. And then right. somehow, you know, I print these <laughs> files out and I send the waves of, off to the wizards and the scientists at STL and they take each recorded sound that I love and, and I have labeled a million times and they somehow turn it into this digital representation that is so, so close. Yeah. I've, I've tried quite a bit of digital amps and, and different plugins and things like that in my studio and live and, uh, STL is is the closest I've come to feeling like you're playing a real amp. It feels like there's air moving and it's pretty cool. So they took all my tones and everything that I love and wrapped it all in one big plug-in. And, you know, we went through an approval process for a couple months, making sure everything was perfect and then tossed it out to the world. Yeah. I think my, my pack is way different than kind of everything else that they offer as well. You know, they're yeah. kind of more in, into the heavy world more metal driven there's a ton of incredible metal amps that they have and their tweed pack is insane like they have so many cool things so i was trying to make sure that i got all my weird unique you know kind of mid gain a lot of clean like just kind of options for people that already have a bunch of metal packs that want to get some rock tones you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
So when you play live, then, is it that you use something like a Kemper or are you all valves and pedals and stuff like that? My rig changes all the time. Uh, like the eternal tone journey should continue to <laughs> evolve over time. But currently, in the past few years, I've been using real amps, but I've been um, using the, the Line 6 Helix for my effects and for switching of my heads and switching of my amps. Uh, I've been on been using at least two heads for a while now so it gets a little complicated with the switching but um currently i'm running or i'm going to be running when we get back to live two Lynx x heads and then two hot cat 30 heads right all of those run into four different cabs they're all being switched by the helix it's just like a complicated mess of junk but but my pedals i i pretty much use all digital pedals when we're playing live or digital effects rather there are a couple of pedals that i uh run into the helix that i haven't been able to match with the digital sound so but yeah i'm like mostly analog guy feel yeah. good about it <laughs> okay <laughs> wall of amps we're gonna have a ton of cabs moving forward i'm getting i think bad cat's making me 16 cabs <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, my guitar tech that's got to move that stuff around, but it's going to look awesome and sound insane. Are these oh. all like cabs, or are some of them going to be like the, the sort of like the fake hollow ones that you have there? Or are these just genuine, just all them cabs on stage? Because um, that is starting, heavy. <laughs> starting with them building mostly real cabs, and we're going to slow into it. Yeah. Don't freak out, bad cat guys. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to build me four to start, and then we're going to keep adding on. We'll see. I don't know. The dummy cab thing doesn't bother me because it looks cool, but also how yeah. much cooler to just plug in 16 cabs. That's a wall of sound oh, coming wow. out. That's, that's, that's a motorhead gig, if anything. <laughs> yeah, we'll I can get away with it. Probably not, but that's what I want to do. Yeah. So from the out, from just from an outside perspective, just like hearing the variation of tones just off the last album alone, like you go from like cathedral bell to wow i hate this song and it's just like completely diverse tones but mm-hmm. you would you kind of think that'd be something that your rig would have to be somewhat complicated or else it wouldn't make sense yeah exactly and that's the fun too it, you know i'm the only guitar player in the band so we kind of we go above and beyond to make everything that i get to do live sound as cool as possible right my front of house guy is a crazy person so he's got you know i think there's like eight channels on my guitar so between the different heads and the di's and the the effect signals and the different cabs and running stuff in stereo it gets really complicated but i have the most insane the last three guitar techs that have worked with me are the craziest people that know everything so i just get to tell them this is what i want here's the sound i found the sound now make sure that i can you know program that into the pedal and hit that during the song so we have a bunch of amps, a bunch of caps, a bunch of effects of switcher. You know, every different song has its own patch on my pedal board so I can just switch around during that song. But when everything's working good and my guys get it buttered up, it's like the easiest thing to play live and everything sounds really close. So, no, absolutely. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> do, you find, do you find it quite daunting that with you being the only guitar player in the band, I know you've mentioned in previous conversations where the, uh, your guitar's cut out uh, when you've been yeah. in the middle of a set and stuff like that. <laughs> Is there yeah. something quite daunting in terms of live and in terms of songwriting where there's quite a daunting aspect to that? Yeah, I mean, I think that's something that, that the use has always done really well is taking advantage of effects and filling space with the one guitar, right? And even even you know the simplicity of some of the guitar in our songs right it's like a power chord can fill a lot of space especially yeah. when you're singing with the harmony and the drums and and some strings going on and all that stuff so uh as far as daunting i i think i've i've always been kind of an effects driven guitar player as it is you know yeah. i think i was highly influenced by the use growing up in my guitar journey so um it's been really fun. You know, I like to have like a cool uh, landscape of guitar. You know, I'm not a yeah. shredder type of dude. I'm not out here ripping metal really fast. I like, I, I can like, relate. <laughs> I like the butter. You know what I mean? I like to take advantage of all the really cool tools I have and, and fill the space so that Bert can sing the cool song. I think it creates opportunities to be 
a bit more sophisticated in terms of how you songwrite because you have a space to kind of mess around with. You have where you can mess around with like a reverb effect or some sort of like wacky pedal or strings or something mad. Well, yeah, and you see the importance of of simplicity and you see the importance of like, maybe if we do something a little less in this verse, it's going to be more special and you'll be able to really hear what's going on. So yeah, um, I think on this record in particular on Heartwork, guitar was, you know, I was trying to accent the vocals was the goal, right? Like it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of times where it was like, ooh, let's do this riff and let's do this other harmony yeah. guitar. I got this, I got this guitar idea. It was like, all right, we have this song that we wrote. Now let's put guitar to it, which is much different than a lot of records I've done and how I've written in the past. So that was really cool learning experience for me as a songwriter and how I'm going to move forward writing songs too is, you know, the, the guitar is there to make sure that the vocals shine. Yeah. And especially when there's only one guitar in the band, it gives me a lot of freedom to do something special one time rather than writing a bunch of riffs and stacking it together and like I do with everything else. Yeah. So speaking of the album Heartwork, um, obviously you had four collaborations on there, four pretty big collaborations saying that, that. And I think that's that's one of the first times that's probably happened within uh, the used, like bringing out their albums. I know there's probably been a few collaborations here and there, but uh, four on one album. How did that come to be, especially getting like two thirds of Blink-182 on there as well? That must have been pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, when you work when you work with John Feldman and and, you know, the used like that we just kind of had access to these incredibly talented people that are in the same position that I'm in right like kind of everyone in this in this industry that's still out there and still working is like loves the use as we all do right we kind of grew up together with it so um you know the blink thing was crazy John reached out and and they were fans of the band and they wanted to come through and you know Mark was there for a few days Travis popped in here and there you know, like not just once he would come in from time to time. And it was just kind of like, they're part of the family over at John's. So along with a million other talented people, it was every single day we would come there. Yeah. Some other talented person that we hadn't previously met would come in and hang out. We'd collaborate on something. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's how this record was, right. It's like you have the most talented people in the world that are just popping in every single day to hang out. They want to work with the band. They want to work with John. It's just kind of, it was good. It was just yeah. strong vibes the whole time we were making the record, but, uh, but yeah. And then Caleb, Caleb getting Caleb, he wasn't there when we were in the studio, but he, uh, I mean, he tracked his parts. We hit him up. It was like, Hey, we want you to sing on this song. Here's the part. Um, you know, let us know if you want to do it and when you could get it back to us. We're like kind of in a hurry. And he wrote the part and recorded his vocals before he went on stage. He was on tour about to play a show. And like an hour before the set, he did all of his screaming that's on the record and then went on stage and played it. Yeah. <laughs> Caleb's a crazy person. Man. <laughs> but yeah, that was super insane having him. He, he absolutely crushed it. It'll be fun if we can do that live and have him come out one of these days. That'd be sick. Yeah. Well, oh, so no. when you was writing it as well, like were these songs already pre-wrote and then you brought, say, like Mark or Travis in or, or Jason or, or was it like a collaboration? So when you got in the studio and you write to them, because when you listen to the songs that Travis and Mark are on, you can tell there's Travis and Mark are on them. And also yeah. with Caleb and Jason, like, and I love that Jason track, by the way, is oh, that the, the breakdown yeah. towards the end is insane. So, so good. Yeah, he, yeah, his performance too, when he came into the studio, to record his part it was wild dude like we know jason he was on he was on a tour with us earlier in the year and uh jason's like one of our favorite people in the world so we asked him to come in he drove up immediately drove up to calabasas and um you know he's just got as we all know at this point when jason walks in the room he's just got like a freaking positive vibe surrounding him right yeah. he's just that guy so he came in super stoked on the song like he was so hyped like you guys, this is the greatest shit. You guys are gonna be the, you know, whatever. Like being super positive, showed him the part, and uh, and he came up with a really cool idea and went in into the the booth and like it was like he was playing a show. I mean, he started like pitting by himself with the headphones on. <laughs> and John's like beautiful studio with all these expensive mics everywhere. It's like he's hitting stuff and like did his. <laughs> I want to say we we maybe recorded two passes of the whole part, but yeah. I'm almost positive we used his first pass like 
dude, what the hell was that? That was insane. Let's use that. So yeah. And, and Jason's always been kind of like part of our team. We love that freaking dude. And it was awesome to have it on it. And he's got to perform that song with us a couple of times now. Yeah. And that shit's crazy. So yay. What was the other yeah. question? I forgot. I got all excited about Jason. I'll, I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, like asking, obviously, were, were they like pre-roll before they came in or did you oh, sort of collab oh, with them a bit when they came in? So um, with Blow Me, we had, we had the bones pretty much done. That song was almost in the bag when we had Jason come in. But yeah. um, but like the Lighthouse that we wrote with Mark, that's actually one of my favorite stories from the record because we had just finished. We had our lunch break. We were eating some food um mark had just showed up and i went into the control room and grabbed an acoustic guitar was kind of waiting for everyone to finish eating lunch and i just picked up the guitar and kind of started playing a riff and feldy walked in and he was like yo that's cool let's record that real quick so i jumped in and and we just recorded this little acoustic riff and uh and then mark walked in and bert and everyone was like oh that's really cool mark has an idea let's see what it is and then it was just like jump straight into the song and before the day was done you know long story long before the day was done the song was in the bag and it was like yeah. we were really really stoked on it and I think that's it's hard I keep going back and forth but I think that's currently my favorite song on the record just just because of yeah. the way that it came together and the way it was just like everyone was just firing off and paying attention all the time right I'm just sitting around messing with a guitar and John has the foresight to be like, Oh, that's cool. Maybe we could use that record it. Mark's like, I got an idea and it was, we're in it and it turned it out to be a great song. So, uh, but yeah, we, that was essentially from scratch with Mark and then um, Travis, same thing. Travis came in when we were writing that song and we had um, our friend JP Clark was there helping us with that song as well. And, and all of us just kind of like, we're throwing shit at the wall till we came up with something really cool and same thing by the end of the day the song was pretty much done so that's what's crazy with crazy, john too yeah. we would go in with nothing you know we would show up with our guitar or nothing and it's like okay let's write a song pick up an acoustic and what do we got today and by the end of the day the song was pretty much finished so but that's the beauty of collaborating in general i love the energy of different mindsets and creativity just like blending so well yeah I, it's so, it. I mean that was a big i don't even know how to put it it's such a mind-blowing experience when you're like oh we should get someone else's opinion in the room you know it's just always yeah. such a good thing to have another set of ears another set of ideas to throw at the band so we can kind of take those ideas and say oh i wouldn't have thought of it in that way let's here's now what the lyric can be, you know? So super fun. I love collaborating with people and, you know, it's put me in a position where now I collaborate with other people as a songwriter yeah. and, and, you know, so as anything with experience, it's like, okay, let's, now I want to do that. Let's get into it. So. No, absolutely. It's so just absolutely. jumping back a tiny bit where you mentioned, obviously that you was a fan of the used, uh, before obviously you joined the band. Yeah. Um, just going back onto that then having gone from being a guy in the front row to being on stage well, thinking yeah. <laughs> singing a cappella with Bert when your guitar cut out singing taste of ink is there a moment where you're kind of like what the fuck <laughs> yeah, I mean almost every day still it doesn't go away I mean this is like it's wild you know a lot of my uh, a lot of my buds got into this like right out of high school everyone that was in my little core group yeah. of friends started touring it was just weird like we kind of all jumped into different bands and it was one of our friends joined a band our buddy phil joined as Lay dying and then we were like wait a minute you can be in a band like i want to do that <laughs> so all of us just were like what can we do and we all work for our friends and um yeah so you know I've been around it for a long time and, and I toured with the used and I got to open for them. And like, I kind of had all my crazy, like this world is nuts stuff in, yeah. in teen years. Right. But, but still getting to, you know, even when I went and auditioned with the band, I'd already toured with them before. So we kind of knew each other. And, um, but yeah, the first time I like played those songs with the band, it was a trip. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I listened to this song when I was in high school and yeah. I think probably the the craziest moment for me thus far was uh, playing Warp Tour in San Diego because it was like 
that was where I was in high school watching yeah, yeah. the headline. And I have like vivid memories of being in the pit and watching the band, you know? So I think while I was on stage playing World Tour in San Diego, looking out, like my parents are there and stuff like that. It was, it was a trip. Like, yeah. this is wild how I'm here. And looking at the kid in the front row going like, I was literally <laughs> you, bro. Like, who knows, man? That's incredible. I love those back- sort of full, full circle stories, man. Like you hear that a lot. Like yeah. Yeah. days in the industry. It's super Crazy. wild, man. So, and all my friends that I was like at that show with now are, you know, somehow involved with the band or in another yeah. band and we're all still writing together and playing and yeah never give up on your dreams kids <laughs> <laughs> well going full circle on that then as well this kind of nicely go flows into what i was going to next mention then so well, as someone who's worked on the merch table for say i when you was 18 to go in to playing on the stage you strike me as quite a humble person in the first place, but is there something, an element of doing both sides of it, which you think is kind of like give you a better perspective when you've kind of gone to the opposite side of like actually playing the stages? Maybe, maybe I got lucky with like my timeline of things and I was kind of able to mature from the bottom. You know what I mean? Like, I, I honestly don't know. I think even to this day, I've always felt like, so excited just to be in the room like I still have yeah. always felt like how did I get here why am I here this is weird you know so I never I don't think when I was you know when I was selling merch I was never like this sucks I want to do something else I was like oh no I a t-shirt for band, you know what I mean and then yeah well. when I was guitar teching it was like wow this is how cool I get to travel the world and work with these bands and fill in here and there and I was always just I've always just been like really grateful to be able to do this a little bit longer. So the fact that it kind of panned out and I've, you know, been doing this now for 15 years and and still this is my only job trips me out every day. You know, it's it's but how did that happen? I don't know. Work hard and be cool to people. You know, I've I I've know. I have like a really stupid motto, but just be a dude and prosper. You know what I mean? I think if you're kind to everyone, then that shit will come back, right? Some of yeah, the people no. I was selling t-shirts next to when I was 18 now are a rs at record labels or managing bands or working at booking agencies. Like kind of all my peers from the bottom are running this industry now. So yeah. I'm glad that I wasn't a dick too much. <laughs> I've been able to keep those relationships and watch my friends, you know, thrive. And yeah, it's just a blessing. I'm, I'm stoked to be here every day. I get to do it. It's awesome, man. So, like, I know we're going back to like co writing and stuff. Like, do you, um, are you co writing within different genres, obviously, as well as rock? And, and what's that like, obviously, getting out of that bubble that you're sort of in with the use and maybe going into doing a different genre? Yeah, I've always kind of been a, a, someone that bounces around. You know, I, there was a year of my life I was in Utah, I was writing pop country songs with some some young artists. And uh, recently I've, I've done some songs with Scary Pool Party. I'm really excited about that. And that's kind of like all electronic. That guy's the most insane musician ever if you haven't gotten into him yet. Um, but yeah, and then like otherwise and doing some active rock stuff and um, there's uh, Arrested Youth, one of my favorite young artists. Like he's doing a really cool kind of indie alternative thing and we're getting ready to work on some stuff together and um yeah i mean i think i do get a lot of rock stuff by proxy and i love it i mean i love being rock guy i love being guitar guy i like mm-hmm. riffs and loud drums you know but um it's also really fun to to do other stuff like this record i just finished a band called sweet tooth they're kind of like a throwback kind of psych alternative band kind of in the like cage the elephant vein yeah. Oh, um, right. yeah. That was fun. I mean, we got to make like a very analog record. Everything is what was recorded with the mic. And, you know, we tried a million amps before we picked what we wanted to record. And uh, very different from making a rock song where it's like, let's get the DI sound and then we'll get a digital amp that sounds amazing and just get, get there really quick. We took our time, you know, like A being preamps and mics for the vocals and shit that I normally just like, let's just get to the finish line, you know? So <laughs> it was fun to do it. Um, it's worth mentioning that obviously you've mentioned that you, you grew up in San Diego. Was it something, was like music something you was aware of from a young age that it was just a place filled with music or is it something that you kind of just kind of Dude, became aware of, of later? 
I, I mean, I, I guess I got into music pretty young, but not, not rock music and not what I ended up kind of diving into. You know, I played, I played the clarinet in elementary school. And I did that <laughs> for years. That was like my thing. I'm like Reed guy. <clears throat> did that until, um, you know, I think sixth grade is when I got a guitar and a friend of mine, Kellen Aysbrook, who's still a musician. He's in a band called Fruition and they're so sick from Portland. But my buddy Kellen, played guitar <clears throat> and he showed me how to play some stuff. You know, I had, my brother had an acoustic guitar that he wouldn't let me touch, but we, he would go to sleep and I would go grab it out of the closet, put it on my lap and try to figure some shit out. And then I'd go to Kellen at school and be like, yo, what is this? He's like, it's all wrong. But um, I mean, and, and that even more full circle moments, kind of one of the first songs that I ever learned on guitar was, uh, Adam's song. I think I was in like yes, six or right, seven. Right. Yes. I was like, kind of figured it out. And my buddy Kellen showed me how to play Adam's song. And then, you know, in the blink of an eye, I'm writing a song with Mark and Travis. So it's kind of crazy. But, but yeah, man, I, uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I got, I got into it early, but it was, it wasn't until my later years that I got introduced to like the influential rock and roll that would turn me into like, all right, I'm a music guy. You know, I played, yeah sports all through high school. I played baseball and football and I thought I was going to go play, you know, football in at a college or something like that. Um, but I was, I joined a band when I was 17. I was still in high school. I joined a band called Thieves and Liars, like a classic rock throwback Zeppelin Floyd kind of thing um, with these two dudes that are way more talented than I was. And it just like kind of brought me into a place that I didn't know existed, you know, playing with yeah. really, really talented dudes and once we started playing shows we signed a really small record deal and i was like i'm out i'm not going to college i'm out to to <laughs> a band guy now you know so we signed a deal and then in between doing stuff with that band is when i was selling t-shirts for sales in and it was just like I, then i just didn't stop you know i don't i don't think i don't think the plan was to do this forever i think it was just like i'm 18 let's go and, and then it snowballed and and now I don't know what the hell else I would do if I wasn't doing this. So, no, absolutely. <clears throat> well, it's it's worth kind of mentioning that from an outside perspective, again, it comes across that you somewhat are a firm believer in just grabbing opportunities when they're available. Would you say that's right? Yeah, I I mean I I not only would say yes to kind of everything, but I also I've always been one to like weasel my way into something. So right. like, you know, a good example of kind of how I've lived my life and, and maybe gotten to where I've gotten is um, I was guitar teching for a Treyu and there was another band uh, who a friend of mine, Dan, was teching for and he was just backstage setting up and I'm walking back to go to my bus and I just overhear someone say, yeah, we need to find a bass player, yada, yada. <laughs> and I just turned around and I was like, yo, dog. I'll play bass. What do you need? He's like, oh, we're doing um, a reunion tour for uh, a static lullaby. Would you want to play bass? I'm like, sure. Yeah. He's like, cool. I'll send you the songs. And they just went about my day. And, <laughs> and a couple months later, like we were on tour together and we did this cool reunion tour and got to do that, you know? So just kind of, yeah. I mean, I guess that's a good example of things that I've done over the years. Like, hey, if you need a guy, I'm available. I'm just saying. <laughs> and try to show up and not not mess up so that's the yeah. main thing i think like we've we found oh, yeah. that ourselves me and matt like like being in a band is like networking is like a very a very important thing just getting to know different people and you know like i said putting your word in making making sure that they know you're there as well that, you know what i mean that's that's always it's always a good thing yeah just being just being present and and useful and awesome to everyone i think is the key that's if i was to give advice to anyone you know talent is a prerequisite right like you have to you have to show up and be like pretty good at what you do but past that you have to be someone that people hopefully want to be around yeah because there's a lot of 24 7 hangs so if you can be cool and show up and work and and pull your weight and appreciate where you're at then the world is your oyster yeah, man. Exactly. Is, is, there, is there anyone you'd uh, you want to work with? Is there any like any any people you you, know, you you looked up to or look up to now that you'd be like, fuck, I'd love to do a call right with you or get you on yeah. the album or something? There's, I I mean, 
everyone like all of these <laughs> up and coming artists that are that are younger you know it's weird that i'm getting old now i still feel like i'm the young artist coming up but <laughs> i am not so uh i mean there's a lot of these artists coming out that that i would be stoked to get to write a song with be, be it for the band be it for their album whatever but um you know i think oh it's so tough to answer that question I don't know anyone and everyone to be honest yeah. like I have this thing where if if someone's talented and ready to work and we can get in a room together I'm confident that we're going to write something really cool and and uh I don't know I don't know how to answer that <laughs> everyone I, well, I'm trying to think I'm like man I've got to work with a lot of people that are yeah. insane and super cool that I never thought I would get a chance to work with so you know yeah you name anyone and I would be pumped to get a chance <laughs> Have you, have you started writing the, a new album then yet with uh, with the used? Are you just waiting to get out and tour? No, we're mm-hmm. waiting to get out and tour this yeah. record. You know, we're always kind of, we're always popping ideas around and, you know, just having fun. And, and uh, you know, everyone kind of has a little recording rig at home right now. So we're kind of passing ideas around as we yeah. always do. But, uh, but no, I think we're, we're really excited to, uh, to get to see this album, see some love and get to play these songs and, but who knows? I mean, I think we we should be able to get together here this year at some point, and who knows what happens. Fingers what's crossed. It, what's <laughs> it like over there? Because I know it, it, over in the UK, it seems like a very long time off before we're going to get to go to any shows anymore. But I know obviously different countries have actually started bringing shows back. Was it like where where you were? Well, there's different regions of the country that are you know drastically different, right? It's pretty much. Yeah. There's a few different countries in our country, but uh, uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's places in the South and the Midwest that are that are open now that are having shows and and you know their their cases are really low and their vaccination rates are really high. So um, I think everyone's feeling optimistic to, for us to be able to do domestic touring at some point this year. Um, but who knows? I mean, we're we're trying to everyone's trying to be safe and responsible and uh, but I think we're close I think the optimism is is progressively outweighing you know every <laughs> all the bad things, basically. So, uh, and and with the vaccines rolling out the way they are you know like I know a lot of people that have already been vaccinated and yeah. and um, so I'm I'm remaining optimistic I'm super excited to hopefully get to to do some of the things we've been talking about doing so Looking forward to it. Looking forward to you guys coming back over here as well and uh, know, getting that chance, I man. I know. There's lots of chatter about different things, so I'm I'm hopeful that we'll hit the ground running when the time comes. So obviously we've got two segments um, that we usually have. I'm pretty sure Matt's made you aware of it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so just yeah, just to just to give it you in advance because sometimes we accidentally put people on the spot with it. And they're like, what? Um, but yeah. Um, <laughs> What's your favorite scary movie? Well, so I was thinking about this. And so I, we haven't been huge into scary movies in the last like decade. My wife is such a sissy. Like she's just out. <laughs> if the preview is scary, she's like, nah, not with me, you know? So, um, but I was thinking about the last, like my type of scary movie that I really loved, um, Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Have you seen this stupid movie? Yeah. I love this movie. <laughs> it's just the dumbest movie, but that's the kind of scary movie that I get behind. You know, there's these group of campers come out and their perception of these two hillbilly dudes is that they're murderers, but they're just these sweet guys trying to help them and they keep killing themselves. It's just a really interesting <laughs> type of movie. I was cracking up the whole time. It was re- well written, but uh, but aside from that, so I can say my daughter, who is three years old, she loves creepy stuff. Like her favorite movies right now. I know it's kind of awesome. Her <laughs> yeah. favorite movies right now are Corpse Bride. She's okay. been huge nice. on that before Christmas. She loves Coraline. Um, what's the other creepy one? Uh, Night- oh, Nightmare and Before Christmas. Christmas and all and yeah, she likes that. Nightmare Before Christmas is like top shelf for her. But yeah, but yeah, <laughs> I had a, a band over here the other day and. We're hanging just outside the studio and my daughter peeked her head out of our house 
she was like, hey guys, They're like, hey Edie, what are you doing? She's like, I'm just watching Corpse Bride. <laughs> I love it. it's like, cartoon, it's cool. But yeah, we like creepy things, but scary stuff, I, I don't get the luxury of enjoying anymore. So was there something that you, as a go-to scary film before the past decade, was there like a cult classic or like a classic horror or? I got, we were into zombie movies for a while. One of the bands I toured with were like zombie dorks and they got really into that and, and like gore. I wish I could remember some of these movies, like some of these classics from, from the seventies and eighties that were just like the goriest shit ever. I can't remember any of the names, but <laughs> in my head, they're super cool. And I loved them back in the day, but I mean, I loved, Man, I loved like The Ring. I thought that was hot fire when that came out. That scared the shit out of me. Yeah. Now it's funny, but I'm old. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, what else did I love? Uh, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That was hot when that came out. Again, comical now. Yeah, dude. I don't know. We watch creepy stuff for sure. Yeah. And scary stuff. The wife's out, dude. Yeah. That's, uh, that's it. Like when you when you look back at like old films like like Texas Chainsaw Massacre and that like. Back in the seventies, that would have been pretty like fucking freaky, like just seeing that, and then like Halloween and just seeing this guy stalking people. Well, that like said, yeah, when you watch it now, it's like it's not as scary. Like you said, you can find it comical in ways, especially Texas what Chainsaw it's Massacre. Nostalgic, it's nostalgic. Nostalgic. You know what? Yeah. I did like the new the new It series. Is those those two films were awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. Like those. And that too, I'm like, babe, you gotta watch it. You'll love it. It's not even that scary. You'll really like it. She's like, I absolutely am not ever. <laughs> I bullied yeah. my missus into uh, going and watching them in the cinemas, and she's not dropped it since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I love that. Like, yeah. it's not even that bad. It's been fine. <laughs> Come on. And then you They're know, so you know when there's about to be a jump scare, and you're going three, two. <laughs> <laughs> and it comes I was like yeah that. that's awesome I hate you <laughs> I feel like it, it for me was like a sort of like like a passing thing whereas when I was like seven years old that was one of my first horrors I saw so that was a good little way of introducing me to horror without it being too like too full on I know the, the new one's a bit more gory but the Tim Curry one was not that bad so yeah you never I know. I can't you, believe you, you watched that. It's seven. I found yeah. that mental. Yeah. I'm going to say, you never know. Your daughter might be waving out the window next saying, just watching it. Just watching it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. No, it's, uh, yeah, it's seven years old. Yeah. Sitting there eating a jam sandwich, watching, uh, watching <laughs> it. Yeah. It's probably a bit messed up, yeah, isn't it, really? Right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, aside from scary movies then if that's predominantly what you watch more what would you say is like you go to like top three films then out of interest Ooh, top three films i would say number one would be uh fifth element kind of cool undoubtedly we could watch that at any time and be stoked um ooh, top three oh shit uh <laughs> recently not just recently, but something that I feel like we watch a lot. <clears throat> uh, Warm Bodies. Love that movie. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah. The Winner with the Wife. I like that movie. So those two we watch a lot. Let's see. So you can dip yourself into like comedy horrors like that's an okay zone. It's like Shaun of the Dead sort of things. Oh, yeah. So good, see, yeah. I'm, I'm about that. Yeah. There's like yes. a fine line. It's so funny. I'm making my wife out to be this like grumpy Gus. She's, <laughs> but there's a there's this fine line between like my type of comedy that I love, which is just like dumb, stupid stuff, and something that she's like, okay, we can watch that. I'm into it. But um, but yeah, like Shaun of the Dead, I love that. I love anything that he does. <clears throat> Third favorite movie? Oh my god. Um. <laughs> I'm just going to spot that. This is probably not top three, but <laughs> when I was in high school, I would skip my six period class almost every other day and go to my buddy's house and we would watch Dude, Where's My Car? Oh, <laughs> yes. Probably that would be like a hundred times. I don't know. So we'll, we'll say that for now. <laughs> and then. <laughs> and no heaven. Yeah, that would be so know. dumb. It totally doesn't hold up, but I loved it. So it's nostalgic. Incredible. All right, 
So second reoccurring segment we have is a, what is your pet peeve? So the rules is, is that you literally pick a topic that pisses you off the most. It could be the smallest thing going and we discuss it from the... <sighs> um, pet peeve. Oh, man. It can be as petty as you want. Like We've had all sorts. Like As petty as you want, Everything. go for it because little things piss people off the most. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, I feel like it's such a broad, uh, the thing that's coming to mind, it, and it's such a broad stroke, but lack of follow through. Like if someone says they're going to do something and they just don't do that. In yeah. fact, more detailed than lack of follow through, lack of not doing something the moment you say it's going to be done. Like I think that's that's something that I'm like obsessive about. Like I, I, manage, uh, I manage four artists right now. And the thing that I feel like gets work done the quickest is when there's a task at hand, let's do it now, you know? Someone to reach out to, pick up the damn phone and call the person. Like some of my, some of my guys, some of my closest friends uh, that I work with, I like, it's like pulling teeth to get them to send an email or make a call. <laughs> Listen, bitch, just do it now. It'll be over with and we'll be freaking stoked. They're not bitches, they're my boys, but uh yeah, so I guess that lack of not doing something in the moment, get it done. The time is now. You know what? I don't think we've had that yet. No, it's a new it would be something actually. that you'd expect to be there, and it's actually yeah. not. Yeah, I, I mean, I am totally the person where if we're having a conversation right now and it's like, oh, it would be cool to reach out to that person or do this thing, I'll be like, cool. And the second we're done, I will pick up my phone and I'm going to do it right now. Yeah. Or else I'll forget and it won't happen and whatever. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so, but if you mentioned obviously that you you manage bands as well, do you find yourself like juggling different mindsets, or do you, do you think it all just comes into one? No, uh, kind of dishing the advice out. Yeah, I mean, it's it's each band has their unique needs and and their unique like niche in the music world and a different label that they work with and a different booking agent and it's definitely you know I have to put on like that band's hat when I'm in that moment and really focus on that and forget about all the other stuff but um but no it, I, it's kind of all the same stuff it's just making through that that everyone's following through and everyone's kind of like continuing to run run a business when you're in a band you don't ever talk about that junk you know you want to be an artist and you want to write your songs and you want to make an impact and and do that but sometimes you have a manager that's like hey by the way you need to make sure that you're engaging a little bit more on on the socials and hey we have yeah. to do some some photos for this and hey you have to do an interview and call this guy and whatever it's just it's mostly just making sure that everyone is kind of like staying keeping the ball rolling so that everyone on the team can can uh you know promote the song and help the band get bigger yeah but it's also dealing with personalities and guys that are dealing with crazy stuff and being asked to do things that are unreasonable for normal people. So, yeah. <laughs> but, but I, I really enjoy managing bands. I, all of my artists are like the most insanely talented, proactive people and, and really good bands that I like. So it's, it's not a chore at all. Have you ever come across like any tour riders or anything where you've been like, Oh, come on guys. <laughs> <Is it? laughs> you know what most of my guys are like they're like humble dudes i think i don't necessarily have what it would take to work with guys that that are a little bit bigger personalities than yeah. i yeah. want to deal with right like the guys i'm i'm working with are just stoked and hungry and trying to make their mark in this industry so so not yet but maybe at <laughs> yet. some point one of these guys yeah yeah and it takes some liberties and that's all right we'll figure it out i remember hearing once like there was an elton john player show near where we was and um i don't know if it was true or not but we heard that apparently he wanted a red carpet rolled out for him in for, over this grass because he didn't want to walk on the grass Shit. and get his, get his boots dirty i was like fuck <laughs> <laughs> you know you've made it when you get to that point when somebody's rolling yeah, the carpet out for you. you gotta have a red carpet budget built in there <laughs> worth it that's great you imagine that on the invoice though for like the tour and it just says red carpet item one x amount yeah 1400 yeah, <laughs> yeah no i've seen crazy stuff i mean bands get you know loads and loads and loads of booze and food and and you know all sorts of stuff i've actually been i was just telling my wife this earlier this was like 
the ultimate vibe. I've seen bands put like, you know, give me a pack of underwear and socks and like stuff like that. They'll put on the rider. <laughs> it's such a power move. <laughs> like so you show up to a city and you got fresh everything. It's a pretty good move, but yeah, nothing too crazy yet. That's pretty practical when you think yeah. about it. Yeah, that's usually well, an initiative. Yeah, man. <laughs> I know. I born in a van and doing stuff like that. You don't have access to certain things. It's like let's uh, once a week let's get some fresh stuff on the rider. It's coming out of the budget anyway. Exactly. Smart move. So just to wrap things up then, because obviously we know you're a bit conscious of time. Have you got anything coming up uh, that you want to mention? I have everything coming up, man. My (laughs) workload has been so insane. I have a bunch of incredible artists coming in. We're going to be doing a bunch more records. Um, Yeah, man, we're we're booked up in here into the middle of summer at this point. And um, it's crazy. I'm excited for for the next year as music starts trickling out that we've been able to do in here and uh but yeah i mean i don't even know what i can talk about yet we do have uh there's a band called the undertaking and uh that i help manage as well as i produce their album and they there's two singles out right now on solid state records their record's going to be out here in the next month so that's really cool look out for that super proud of their album it's they're really heavy really really good music genuine dudes so um yeah, check that out. Sweet. Otherwise awesome. than that, Joe Bradford, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us. It is an honor being a fan of the band, a fan of the band overall. But yeah, thank you for taking the time, man. Thanks a lot. Of course. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Mad respect. Woo! That was episode 51 of an AFL podcast with Joey Bradford from the used I can't, I can't get over that we just had a casual conversation it, it <laughs> is a band weird. that we fucking listened to in high school <laughs> well i say like i remember hearing the taste of ink for the first time yes. when you showed it man and then we just stopped, got obsessed from there so yeah it's, ah. it, it's a it's another full circle moment for ourselves which is pretty cool i, I blame ashley <laughs> <laughs> but yeah yeah, don't forget to uh, check out the latest album that they released. Um, it's it's a fucking awesome album. It's got some cool collabs on there that you'll love. Uh, don't forget to check out Joey's recent projects with uh, different bands that he's been doing. So I'll probably keep up to date with him on his Instagram page. And uh, yeah, again, get to our socials. Keep up to date with everything. We've got new stuff coming out all the time. YouTube, we've got new stuff on there. And uh, Silver Screen on scene as well with uh, a good friend, Ryan. Yes. So if you haven't already, if you go on to our Instagram, for example, there is a lovely link tree with all the links you could ever need. That includes our Discord, our YouTube, whatever else, if you want to find other episodes, all other 50 fucking episodes of an airful podcast, plus the bonus episode, plus Horror Fest from last year which I'm dreading is doing again. Uh, <laughs> and now it was later. <laughs> God, don't. Uh, <laughs> there's also um, the now brand new Silver Screen Unseen. Episode one is out now covering Parasite uh, with Charlie from As Everything Unfolds. It is awesome. 100% check it out. Uh, like we said, uh, lovely Matt Pearson. We'll be back soon with his new show, which we will be giving more details about in the future. Hardcore Projects will be back soon, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But otherwise than that, we will see you in the next episode. See you later. See you later.